What's up guys, so I'm back over winter break. Uh, I apologize for the uh, echo. I'm kind of in like a, just a plain white room right now. So right, today I'm gonna go over seven things that I wish I knew before I got to UNC. Um, and so keep in mind, these are gonna be things that are specific to UNC. So, you know, while having a, you know, a planner and getting good sleep, like, you know, things like that, they're important for college. That's everywhere you go. So the first thing is how competitive UNC is. And I don't mean getting in, which also is competitive, but I mean, once you get here, it's still very, very competitive. There's sort of a culture around, you know, how well you're doing, how well you did on your tests, your GPA. Now, a lot of this kind of just comes with the territory. Something like 80% of kids are in the top 10% of their graduating class. So everybody is, you know, pre-med, pre-law, they're going to graduate school or, you know, everyone's really ambitious. And so this kind of stuff is just inherent um, when you go to a school with so many students like that. GPAs across the, you know, the US are on an increase. Um, and there's an article in the description that I'm gonna link below that you guys can check out. Um, but in the article, it, I mean, it basically shows that, you know, even though GPA is on an increase um, in every, you know, in all universities, UNC is increasing faster. You know, the GPAs of students there. So the competition is a good and a bad thing. Uh, you know, it's bad because a lot of times people at the school will get caught up in comparing themselves to others and feeling inadequate. But, you know, it's also good because it makes UNC, you know, as prestigious as it is. You know, people know that students graduating from UNC are ambitious and they care about their academics. You really gotta take all this kind of stuff with a grain of salt. So the second thing is how bad parking is. And oh my God, it's horrible. Part of the problem is that everything is on campus. And don't get me wrong, I love UNC's campus, but like the, the football stadium's on campus, the basketball arena's on campus. I mean, we like literally, we have a forest in the middle of our campus. It doesn't leave a lot of room for parking spots. And even at some of the apartments and the dorms, if they have parking spots, first you'll have to win a lottery and then you'll have to pay, I mean, 125, 150 bucks a month uh, just to have that parking spot. Parking's horrible. As far as the specific rules about where and when you can park, uh, so there are some parking decks on campus. Um, some of them are free, some of them you have to pay depending on when you go and park there. And there are some roads where you can kind of park on the sides if there's not a game going on or some other event. But the rules themselves are literally so confusing and they change every year. If you guys want, I can do a video specifically about that. Um, just leave like something in the comments and just let me know if you guys want something like that. Because the rules are just literally so bad. And honestly, they, like, they will tell you. So you can't, it's hard to sneak around. Like they will tell you. This third thing is probably gonna sound pretty obvious, but I've actually got a tip to kind of help you revolve around this problem. The same class, depending on who you have as a teacher, could be very easy or it could be very hard. You and your friend might have the same exact chemistry 101 class, but if you have different professors, your experiences are probably gonna be different. For example, I'm a bio major and I think there's like seven different teachers for bio 101. Some of the professors are really good. Others of them, literally, you're gonna be on YouTube all night teaching yourself. Some of them will give you extra credit, some of them won't. Some of them use the same tests as the other professors. One thing you can do to kind of combat this issue is go on a website called ratemyprofessor.com and I'm gonna also put that in the description below. Basically, you can go to almost any school and um, you can search up the professor and the class and, it'll sh and people basically they make comments um, if they've taken the class and they'll say, oh, like they give a lot of homework or they have, their tests are really hard. And you can see what people say about the class and the teacher. So you can have kind of a better idea about what the teacher's gonna be like. So the fourth thing is that some of the classes that you think would be easy are honestly, like they, they can kind of be hard. I remember my freshman year, I took a drama class thinking that it would be one of my easier classes and on the first exam I got a 40. Really, you have to take all of your classes seriously. Even if you think it's gonna be easy, as soon as you stop taking it seriously, it's gonna get difficult. Another thing I didn't realize until I got to school was that each region of campus is very separated from all the others. And I mean socially and physically. North campus is like Joyner, Spencer, ACOP. South campus is like Horton, Hinton James, E House. And then Granville has three towers, east, west, and south. I think part of the reason is because they're so, each part of the campus is so far from the other parts. Like Granville is literally on Franklin Street pretty much. 
and South Campus is at the way other end of campus. It's hard for the, the people living in those areas to interact with each other other than classes. Another thing too is that Granville has its own separate dining hall and so the kids that are living there, they don't even have to go to Lenore to get food. Part of the problem with this is that because the communities are so separate from each other, they often get stereotyped. And so Granville's got a certain stereotype, South Campus has a certain stereotype, North Campus has a different stereotype, and honestly, they're not usually that accurate. I would really encourage students coming in their first year to try to interact with people in class as much as they can. I mean, I lived in Granville, and some of my best friends lived on South Campus for two years. You really, you don't know who you're gonna meet, and it's better to just be nice and, and see what happens. Another thing I wanted to know coming into school was where do people live during certain years of college? UNC requires all first year students to live on campus for their first year. So unless you're a transfer student, then you're probably gonna be spending your first year in a dorm. Second year is usually the biggest mix of where people are living because sometimes people will stay in their dorm another year or they'll switch dorms. Sometimes people will live in their fraternity or sorority houses or they'll go into an off-campus apartment. But by the third year, people are usually in an off-campus apartment or a house. Um, and if not, then they're still in the dorm. By fourth year, it's pretty much the same thing. People are either off campus in apartments and houses, or sometimes they'll stay on campus all four years and stay in dorms, depending on how things work out. Although there's always a good mix of what people are doing. So some people will stay in their dorms for all four years. I know someone that stayed in Granville for three years. Girls will spend more time in their sorority houses if they really like it. Some people go immediately into houses after freshman year. It's really a big mix of what people do. So the last thing is that when you decide on a major at UNC, they, each major has what they call major sheets. They're basically these sheets of paper that tell you what classes you're gonna have to take to graduate. Follow these sheets. I know it might seem like that's obvious, but I kind of started getting lazy and I wouldn't always look at the sheet for when I was registering for classes. I would kind of just look for the easiest class classes I could find and now I'm a little bit behind in my major. Every sheet is divided up into four major sections. Foundations, approaches, connections, and then major and minor electives. Foundations and approaches are basically all the classes that UNC requires almost everybody to take. So like your gym class, your English classes, everyone has to take certain science classes. The connection section is pretty similar in that it has a lot of classes that UNC requires everybody to take. But the difference is that in the connections, you're more likely to take classes that could also count towards your major. And then, of course, the major and minor elective sections is basically the classes that you need to take for your major and minor. What I meant earlier when I said that I wasn't paying attention to the sheets is that a lot of classes can count towards multiple sections. So you can have an approaches class that also fits in your major and it'll count towards both. I didn't really pay attention to that at all. This is another section where if you guys want, I can make another video that goes more in depth about what classes UNC requires you to take and how these sheets really work. Or if there's anything else that you guys wanna hear about or we're still confused on, just leave it in the comments below and I'll be sure to get to it. Even though there's a lot of things that I wish I knew before I got here, going to UNC was one of the best decisions that I've ever made. So good luck on SATs, ACTs, applications, and whatever else. And above all, go Heels.